Hi guys, uh, this is part two of the June 2023 update. Uh, it's the Monday of the bank holiday weekend, uh, so June 5th here in Ireland. And I've completed all of the work. I have a little bit of tidying up to do, but overall everything is working fine. It's been tested. Um, so I just wanted to cover a couple of things in this video. I had made a much uh, longer uh, video or series of smaller videos, but it ended up at being about 25 minutes long, which is just far too long for the um, for the audience that I'm putting this out for. So I wanted to keep it uh, short and simple here today. The main point I wanted to make here is in relation to energy consumption. The original pumps I had probably averaged out at maybe a total of uh, 300 watts uh, between the two pumps. So I'm becoming a little bit more conscious of cost. Uh, the electricity prices here have more than doubled in the past year. There's no sign of them coming down anytime soon. And running a pond 24 seven isn't cheap, at least not if you're doing it properly. So I was looking at the pumps that I had purchased uh, two 350 watt pumps, both uh, rated at 18,000 liters per hour, uh, which is very much overkill uh, for what I actually need. Uh, so what I've done is I've uh, calculated uh, the amount of hours I actually need to run the main pond pump, uh, the skimmer. Um, I can I, I can do it out, um, but I, I have it running with the main with with the main pump anyway, just to get some circulation going. So to run 5,000 liters, I need to basically cycle it uh, once every two hours, I think it is. Uh, so it worked out running the main pump because the skimmer is on a separate loop. It doesn't filter the water. It just clears the surface of the water and, and gives some flow. So I just calculated on the main pump. So 18,000 liters per hour. It worked out at um, three hours, 20 minutes, uh, give or take a few minutes. So. I've decided to run the pond for five hours uh, during the day and I have set it up in such a way that it, it does not automatically. I don't have to keep coming out and turning it on and off. I use the Alexa Home Assistant here in my home. Um, I've just installed a Wi-Fi mesh. So I now have good signal out in the filter house here. And I have installed three plugs. So the three plugs that I've installed Smart plugs, I should say, Miros uh, smart plugs. You can get them on Amazon. They're about, I don't know, 25 pounds, 30 euros uh, for, for the three plugs. You normally buy three in a pack. One of them is set on the fly zapper. Um, one of them is set on the skimmer. And one of them is set on the main pump and UV filter. The main pump and UV filter will both be on the same circuit because if the UV filter turns on by itself, um, it'll boil off and the bulb will uh, blow prematurely. So I don't want that happening. Um, getting back to costs, the UV filter itself is 36 watts. The two pumps together are 700 watts and that's 736 watts. So running that over a 24 hour period, uh, that's a little over 17 and a half thousand watts or what hours so that's uh, 17 let's say 17.5 kilowatt hours that's a lot of electricity to be using on a daily basis on a pond i here in ireland i have night rate electricity because uh, we drive uh, electric vehicles and we try to shift as much of our um, base load so dishwasher washing machine and general base load onto night rate electricity the night rate is about 25 cents uh, per kilowatt hour, give or take a few cents. And the day rate is twice that, so about 50 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, now, night rate is, I think it's 10 hours, um, depending on whether it's summer or winter, it starts at 11 or it starts at midnight. So I just kind of assume night rate is everything after midnight up until eight o'clock in the morning. So let's say we have nine hours um, of, of night rate electricity. If we ballpark that, we're looking at about 40 cents uh, per kilowatt hour over a 24 hour period. Uh, running that, that would be 40 cents, 24 hours, seven euro, 
uh, give or take a few cents per day. And that would be over two and a half thousand euro a year. Wow. Uh, so yeah, it is, it, 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 it's a lot. I'm, I'm sure the old pumps weren't costing half that much uh, run, run, running, actually nowhere near it. So yeah, that's a lot. What I've done is I've calculated the three hours and 20 minutes that I need to run these pumps. And I've said it that three of those hours will run night rate. So five o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock in the morning, the pond will get a good cycle. Both pumps will turn on, UV filter will be on, it'll get a good cycle for the day. Then it'll rest for four hours and turn back on for a half hour. So that would be around noon. Then it'll rest at about 4.30, um, come on, or sorry, it'll, yeah, it'll rest until about 4.30, it'll, everything will turn on again for a half hour and turn off at five. It'll rest again for another four hours. Um, so what, at nine o'clock at night, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll come back on for a half hour and then it'll, it'll turn off and it'll rest then until five o'clock the following morning when the cycle begins. Uh, so this will be seven days a week. I won't have to do anything at all. Now I've also set up uh, commands or as uh, Amazon called them routines where I can ask, um, I can ask a Alexa to uh, test the pumps. So it'll turn each pump on for five seconds. It'll turn the skimmer on first. Uh, so we're, we're not turning everything on uh, at, at the exact second. I don't want that kind of peak. Um, so the skimmer will come on first, five seconds later, the main pond um, and UV filter will then come on and they'll both come on for five seconds and then they'll both turn off. I also have a setting where if I want to sit out in the yard for um, you know half hour or so, uh, I have a command where I can just say Alexa, um, activate ponds and the pond will turn on for a half hour. I can also uh, tell it to shut off if I'm only out there for a few minutes. But the, the, the point is I'll be saving uh, on the energy consumption. The pond doesn't need to be running 24 seven. I will be keeping an eye on this over time, uh, but that's the, that that's uh, basically where I am here. So I suppose what I'll do now is I'll show you the setup, uh, what changes have been made and then we'll have a last look at the pond and we'll end the video. So uh, moving on to the work that's been carried out. Okay, so you'll remember from previous uh, videos of the setup, I actually had the, uh, the old main pond pump inside this um, settling chamber or settling barrel. That's no longer the case. I have installed the pump on the outside so it's truly dry mounted this time in in the last video i may have mentioned that i was planning on installing another tank connector here because this guy was that was blocked up that wasn't necessary uh, on the inside of the tank it was just a little cap that i unscrewed and it opened up that connector for me so i was able to expand this 90 degree bends it took me about 10 minutes to do it. I had to do it on a slow heat so as not to crack the end of the pipe itself. So I expanded it um, to an extent that I was able to uh, push fit it over the tank connector using um, PVC uh, cement glue and also some Tech 7 TransClear around the edge. I then ran this down to the pump here, which is mounted in a vertical fashion or portrait mode. So we have the inlet here with one of the old connections. I installed the old connection because I had a leak on the new connection. You'll remember from the last video, I shrunk um, half of the uh, couple connectors. So the 40 mil or inch and a half uh, couplers. I shrunk one side of those and inserted it. In, in, into the inlet of the pump. This first one didn't hold very well, so I removed that and I installed one of the old connectors, which is uh, fairly, fairly tight. So that's no longer uh, leaking in that area. From there, as per usual, it's running up along here. I did have to, you're wondering why there's a, 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 couple, a couple connected there. I had to cut that off uh, to replace one of these uh, connectors here. And you'll see that's 
that's all sealed up there. I had to remove that male threaded connector because I had a leak after replacing some of the pipe work. I installed a replacement because uh, it broke the pipe. So I installed a replacement in there. I wrapped around some two inch pipe. Um, I cut the end of a 90 degree, 90 degree connection, uh, wrapped that around there, filled it up with um, Tech 7 TransClear just to make sure that uh, I'm not going to have any leaks there. So that's all sorted. You remember from the previous videos, but just in case, it runs up into the UV filter here. Um, up, uh, the pipe work is behind this coat here. I'm not gonna remove it. Runs up here and into tanks one, two, and three. From there, we have the gravity uh, slide and all that runs into the plant, uh, the planter outside. Here is the setup for the uh, plugs. So I have the Miros Smart plug here for the skimmer. Uh, skimmer labeled here as well. I have the one here, this is called Pons because it has the main pump and it also has the UV. Uh, this I'll be sorting out later. This is just one of the things I have to fix. I accidentally cut the plug off the UV filter when I was removing some other uh, items that I'm no longer using in here. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll have to fix that up later. It's, it's safe, but it's unsightly. So I'm gonna wrap that with some electrical tape. Uh, the fly zapper here, of course, on its own circuit. I have that, you know, coming on for a couple of hours in, in after sundown and then turning off. So not using up too much electricity. Over to the skimmer. You'll recall the original skimmer was literally just under this pipe work here, but because this 350 watt pump is a larger body, I couldn't just replace like with like, or I couldn't set it up in the same way. So I've moved it a little bit further down to the left. So we have the inlet here. I uh, sealed this with PVA glue uh, or cement, and I've also given it a generous dose of Tech 7 Trans Clear. I've wrapped some cut off pipe here around here as well, just to give it a mechanical seal. And I've sealed that at both ends. Done the exact same thing here on the outlet. So again, that's that's all seals with, um, with, with, with cement as well as the uh, Trans Clear. So it's sealed at both ends. And that will run along here and down under the ponds and out the jet. So let's move outside and I'll show you the pond as it is finished. I'll show you the pond running. And these are the old pumps that I have removed. I'll uh, take those apart and mess around with them. Maybe I'll keep some components and over to the pond. So it's a beautiful sunny day out here. And I'm going to give a Alexa a command. Activate pond. Okay, so first of all, the skimmer turns on there, as you can see. And then the pump itself, the main pump. And then we have water flow. Got excellent flow here. I've actually, actually had to redirect that a little bit lower uh, because it was blowing jets of water out through the surface. Um, we've got a nice run here. I've also reinstalled the basket. Uh, you won't see that there because it's running, but I've reinstalled the basket to prevent any Lego pieces from going into the pump. Yes, you heard me right. Lego pieces. That is in fact what has blocked both of the pumps. Both of the pumps were jammed with Lego pieces. So <laughs> well, 350 euros later, it's all running again and better than before. So guys, uh, this is the pond as it is. Uh, can't see the fish at the moment because I've, I've given a treatment of the blanket answer get rid of some of the algae that's built up in the pond over the last few days. 
if you have any questions please feel free to ask if i have an answer i'll give it to you if i don't i'll let you know so this is the end of the video now thanks for watching